Hi, I'm Rim. Uh, I often go by Rim Burjak uh, within the Near ecosystem. I would characterize myself as a community builder. I am primarily involved right now with Open Forest Protocol, which is a climate sustainability project on Near. My name is Aaron Casillas, and I would consider myself crypto native. And currently, I am a principal of Outside Box Capital and uh, on the board of directors of the Web3 Familia DAO. I'm Jordan, and I have been working in the Near ecosystem for a bit over a year, and um, actually came to the ecosystem through a love of art and technology. My name is Magnus. I'm currently leading the business on Near DAO, which basically focuses on outreach to any teams building interesting stuff on the blockchain and making them aware of the Near Grants program. Hi, I'm Tracy Bowen, and I'm the founder of HerDAO. My name is Chloe Lewis, uh, founder of the Marmon J Foundation. DAOs are software. Um, when it comes down to it, it's a tool for what, whatever you're doing as a company or a cooperative or um, whatever your organization is. It's just another tool. And I see it as something that's going to revolutionize the business world um, in an even bigger way than spreadsheets did. Um, it takes that idea of being able to keep track of information in the way that you can in spreadsheets, but do real real automation around it. DAOs are a really flexible way of organizing people and coming together because you can do it from a very primitive level, just like friends who want to start a club and maybe you have some funds to buy lunch together, uh, or you can do it in a really um, complex manner as a government or Congress or maybe a DeFi project, uh, which requires a board of, of um, uh, decision makers. DAO is, is one of those weird things that people can imprint a lot of, you know, they can project what, what they, what their kind of position is. So in that way, it's, it's kind of very open, but really when you, when you distill it down, it's a, it's a form of governance. And that doesn't sound too sexy, but when you get in the weeds, um, it, it's, it's very empowering. You have various new tools and, and mechanisms which to self-govern. And uh, we're coming from an era where we are more used to being governed as opposed to taking on that responsibility. Normally people think DAOs are automation at the center and people at the fringes. And um, the main focus is the smart contract or the technology itself. But actually what I'm finding in creating a DAO is that people are very much at the center. It's very much a collaborative community effort. And the technology really is taking a second place to that. I just think because the traditional ways of work don't really benefit people. Um, you're contracted to work in a job that you probably don't like, you know, there's um, really unattractive hours, really unattractive wages, you probably don't feel like you have much of a voice. All of these things conspire to make traditional work practices and traditional work organisations not very nice to be in. DAOs come along and they give you this great option of work whenever you want, you kind of be your own boss, you automatically have a say in in the running of a project, you can, you know, vote with your wallets, you can, you know, have all of this freedom, which you don't necessarily get in a traditional organisation. And I think that is the real, you know, selling point of of DAOs, and I think that's why people are rushing to DAOs uh, to 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 fulfill their their kind of work lives and their kind of dreams. There's lots of good reasons to set up a DAO. I think that one of the most attractive things about a DAO is the autonomous nature of it, the way that you can automate a bunch of things. Um, so that on, on near what that means is that any function call on any smart contracts, you can call from a DAO. So anything that you could do as an individual user, you can perform that action as a group. 
but it can also be used for things like the the recent Unchained DAO, which is collecting funds for humanitarian relief in Ukraine. Um, last year, we did similar DAOs for COVID relief in Vietnam um, and also flooding in Henan, China. So I definitely hope we continue to see a lot more collaboration between DAOs in terms of uh, like how they fund and own projects. Like if we're in this ownership economy and it's if we're so happy we can finally own the internet as individuals, I'm hoping we start seeing communities own things together or fund things together. For me, I feel like Near is the, the blockchain for the, the, the consumers, uh, for the masses as well. Near makes it easy for Web2 natives uh, to, to make the transition. And I feel like that's a unique position uh, that Near has, because even if I had to compare with other chains, I don't really feel like any of them is actively tackling that problem. It's, it's still a developers first type of world. Um, and that's where I feel like Near has an advantage. Um, apart from that, also just the responsibility towards the planet uh, being carbon neutral, um, very important as well. NEAR have been one of the prominent organizations to really walk the walk. Because a lot of people talk about diversity, a lot of people talk about inclusion, but they don't actually do much or they don't actually have a strategy to bring this about. NEAR are really serious about diversity and inclusion. They they earmark funds, uh, they have programs, they're quite well distributed around the world. They're just a serious project. And, you know, I've met quite a few near people now, and, you know, it's just been a joy to work with them. Um, I hope to do a lot more work with near. Near has has kind of been forward thinking. It feels like there was a lot of thought and effort given into where this is going. So, uh, and building for that, as opposed to building for the moment when, whenever Nier started. And how I see that is uh, in the tooling. Nier's tagline is simple, secure, and scalable. And, and all those things are, are perfect. Um, one of the other things that I was looking at as I was considering different chains was the onboarding um, flow and you know people ask how do I start an Astro DAO and inevitably it's well first you need a near wallet and that's relatively easy really um, using something like neardrop.io I can give somebody new to blockchain a wallet in a matter of minutes show them how their wallet works explain to them this this idea of like radical responsibility and don't lose your passphrase because it's really on you um, but the onboarding flow is amazing. And I think that that's really what's required for the next billion users to show up and to gain value from crypto and from blockchain and from all these things. 